determines your dream. Because you always dream about the things you worship in life. My name is Timo and next to me is my kind-hearted, elegant, spiritual, surfing, beautiful sister and girlfriend, Claire V. And the title of our charge is Kingdom Dreams. So, we have all experienced that we, when we spend time with people we like or admire, that we start acting like them and start talking like them. We imitate others because we want to be close to them or to look up to them. And you probably ask, why has imitation something to do with kingdom dreams? I will tell you. I believe that the kingdom of God is only built on the dreams of people who walk with God. And only when you're close to God, you get influenced by God. Only when you're close, you get His character, you get His thoughts, you get His heart, and you get His willingness to see His dream become reality. Your worship determines your dream. Because you always dream about the things you worship in life. So the question is, who? Or what do you worship? If you worship God, you will live out his dream. Yes. If you worship other things above God, you will live out Satan's dream for your life. You can completely waste your life by just living life for yourself. Or you can let your life count for God's glory. And the choice is up to you. So be a true worshipper and stay a true worshipper and find a dream in the dream of God for the salvation of everyone. So what is my dream? I want to build the church in Europe. I want to help the church spread in Europe. So my plan for now is to get a job in immigration law so I can practically support and sustain the movement of this church in whole Europe. I want to make disciples in the professional world so we can financially support the raising up of leaders in our church. And I want to build the church in Amsterdam, the place where I'm planted. And I dream about becoming a shepherd in Italy. So the question is, the question is, what is your dream? And if you have a dream, what is your plan? Because a dream without, without a plan is about to never wake up and see reality. Let's read about someone who had a dream and the process he needed to go through in order to see his dream come reality. Psalm 105 verse 19 in the Passion Translation. God's promise to Joseph purchase his character until it was time for his dreams to come true. I give you Claire V. Thank you very much Timo. Thank you everybody. Uh, my name is Claire V. I'm from the Edinburgh International Christian Church. Yeah. It's a privilege to be able to speak about Kingdom Dreams. Um, I've been a disciple for about three years and a half, and a year ago at the EMC 2021 in Paris, I was sent on a mission team in Edinburgh, and it's been incredible. It's been refining, it's been purging, and sometimes I feel like Joseph. And so today, I'm going to be sharing from a place of learning, from a place of, I'm with you in this, and so follow me as I follow Christ, <laughs> for the sisters. Um, but I think I'm very inspired by Joseph, because Joseph had a mindset who determined the reality of his dream. So Joseph, no matter where he was, if you read the story of Joseph throughout Genesis, it's super inspiring. And Joseph was a man who was thrown into um, slavery. He um, served in Potiphar's house. He served in prison. He was treated unfairly. And then he, he ruled the whole of Egypt. And so this guy had, um, a, um, you, could, you could call it a career like no one else. 
But what was special about Joseph is that he knew that the Lord was with him. And because of this, he was constant in whatever he went through. He wasn't emotional, he wasn't unrighteous, he always stuck with his God. And I think for me, this has been the greatest lesson this past year. I was baptized uh, in 2019. Uh, I was baptized in the campus ministry, but I was working full time. Um, I was working in hospitality, sometimes up to 16 hours a day. And um, then I went to, back to uni. Then I went into the ministry and I'm on a mission team and I'm an intern. So I went to kind of every ministry so far. <laughs> um, but what's been incredible being in Edinburgh is that I've really learned the value of sticking with God. Amen. And I really saw that when you start delighting in God, He gives you the desires of your heart. Amen. I think I was always waiting for the next season to find my joy in God. Always waiting for, oh, when I'm going to be dating, when I'm going to be going in the ministry, when I'm going to be going on a mission team. Ne nothing was ever fulfilling. And I was not really happy in my relationship with God until I was sent to, the, to another country like Joseph. And not, ex you know, not exactly like Joseph. I was not in slavery or anything. But I was sent to another country where I was I kind of isolated from all of my friends, all of the glory that I wanted to receive so that I could work on my relationship with God. I'm super grateful. Honestly, I want to really encourage you to go on a mission. I'm just going to put it out there, sisters. Like, the mission team is the most incredible thing that can happen for your relationship with God. Um, but I have a question, sister. Do you take delight in God in this season of your life, in every season of your life, wherever you're at? Because what was really special about Joseph as well is that his mindset, because he was set on God, he was able to have an attitude of service, of taking care of other people's needs, that eventually led to um, saving his nation, God's nation. How? You ask me. I will tell you. So Joseph, because he knew God, I believe that he really trusted God's character to take care of him. And when he was in prison, in Genesis 40, it says that he attended the prisoners. He served the prisoners. He served in Potiphar's house, but he also served the prisoners. Another version says that he was the, their personal attendant. He took care of their needs. What allowed Joseph to take care of their needs was that it was because he knew that he was taken care of by God himself. So he was able and Fred and Fred, Fred sorry, I'm French, um, to be able to take care of other people's needs. And I think this is something as a woman in the 21st century that we can all struggle with and it's called selfishness. And I'm the first one. And so I want to, you know, speak to you sisters from a place of, I'm learning as well, but the main thing I've learned is that through your relationship with God, you actually start to know God's character. You start to know how much He loves you and how much He cares for you. And then you don't have to worry about your own needs. You don't, you don't have to be selfish because you're going to be taken care of by God. And so you're free to give to others. And through this, you can take care of the needs of the lost, you can take care of the needs of the kingdom, and you can fulfill the dream of God to save people and keep them saved. And so Joseph, I'm going to close with this, but Joseph, he was a dreamer, but he carried the dream through caring for the needs. And I think as sisters, whether you're single, whether you're in campus, whether you're married, this is key in fulfilling God's dream in Europe, is to care for the needs by having a cranking relationship with God. And so my challenge for you, sisters, is something that has been helping me so much this past year in Edinburgh, is to, when I go in my quiet time, is to look for God's heart, is to look for His character. Uh, but not just in my quiet time, but also uh, in the nature in a relationship, in um, the fellowship, when you hear about someone's story, like always try to see where is God working? What is he doing? Even in the darkness, like um, Audi was preaching, I really appreciate what you shared, bro. I think it's always looking, okay, where is God? And then when you see this, when you see where God is at, it gives you confidence to then be able to pour out yourself and carry on the dream um, for this lost world. Thank you so much. So most of us got a dream on our hearts when we got baptized. Where we give up to start, we give up easily, 
or even start doubting when we meet the first obstacle in our life. And discouragement, suffering, and setbacks can kill our dreams. But that's only when we're not able to see the purpose of this all in our lives. So God allows it to change the dreamer for the dream, not to change the dream for the dreamer. The question is, is the dream changing you or are you changing the dream? So God cares about our character so much, the person we need to become in our lives. And if our character is not ready to bear the blessing of a dream coming to fulfillment, then that blessing will become a curse for us and for the people we are going to lead. So Joseph experienced setbacks and suffering in his life. He was sold into slavery, falsely accused of sexual assault that lands him into jail. And the person that he held to get right with the Pharaoh, uh, he forgot about him. And he stayed for two more years in jail. And at first, Joseph acted very pridefully about getting the dream. It was all about him, all about his position. But actually, after a season of affliction, after the, all the suffering in his life, he became an instrument of salvation for many. So your dream may only serve you, but the dream of God will lead you to serving others. And what happens is that you will change in the process. So my one and only point is just the kingdom is only built on broken egos. If our own ego is broken, it's no longer about us and it leaves right. all the space for Jesus. Amen. Suffering and hardship are actually necessary to put us at the side and to make room for Jesus. So become an instrument of salvation and become great in God's sight. If you expect an easy life, you will never become great for God. And it's very hard to become an instrument for salvation. Are you willing to be brought low? Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to go through the training. And for my life, I went from, from the courthouse to university as a full time, um, uh, in a full time ministry. I was even more spending, spending more time on the university than I was a law student <laughs> to talk with people. I gave up my salary where I was able to live off very comfortably to a sal salary is very hard to actually live on. I gave up my dream to go to the Middle East and to live there and to work for a reconciliation organization. And I lost nearly all my friendships in my life in order to become a disciple. Wow. And my whole life, I lost everything. But then the only thing I had left was just a new chance from God. And the only thing I was able to do was just to serve because I knew it was better for my future and probably for the future for many others as well. So I want to challenge you to find a dream in the dream of God. To never give up on that dream and let the dream change you instead of you changing the dream. To God be all the glory.